This is Rob from Servcasters Journal and in this segment we're going to look at sealing our plugs. Sealing has long been one of the biggest mysteries in plug building and there are literally hundreds of different ways that people prefer to do it. I'm going to show you the way I like to do it. I like to use spar urethane. It's readily available. I get mine at Home Depot. Um, it's relatively inexpensive and it's easy to work with. There are a lot of other uh, substances out there that people seal with, uh, most notably um, boiled linseed oil that you need to be very careful with. If you, if you are using boiled linseed oil, you have to be aware that there is a spontaneous combustion danger and if you have uh, crumbled up rags with linseed oil, you have a huge fire risk. Okay, so I'm going to be using Helmsman Spar Urethane and what I have here is I have a tennis ball can that I like to use because it's tall and it's thin so I can get a plug like a needlefish in there without having to use too much material. But because the tennis ball can is um, a little bit unstable, I like to drop this into another can. Makes it a little bit uh, more stable in case I go to tip it over. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this with mineral spirits. I don't have a set formula. I kind of like to go by feel. Um, I would say most I do is maybe 25%. So I'm going to pour in some mineral spirits. Keep in mind, the more that I cut this, the less sealing power it's going to have. So I just want to make it thin enough to um, penetrate the end grain. All wood is going to absorb, it's going to want to absorb moisture through its end grain way before it does through the side grain. So the critical areas are going to be your through holes, your, your hook holes, your lip slot, and the front and the back of the plug. Think of the, uh, the wood as a bunch of straws held together. You know, the moisture is going to want to come through the end there. And we're going to want to seal those off. Anyway, after I um, drop my mineral spirits in here, I'm just going to use this plug. Oh, I'm also using just baling wire. This is not stainless steel plug wire that I use for through wire. You can also buy this at any of the, um, the big chain hardware stores. This is um, used for tying fence together. It's inexpensive and it's easy to bend. What I like to do is just bend it in the middle so that as I stick it into the plug, it's pressing up against the side walls and it will not just allow the plug to drop off where I can't get it. One end has a hook that I'll hang this after it's um, been dipped in the uh, sealer. But I'm just going to use this to kind of stir now because I just mixed this batch. You know, obviously I want to keep in mind when I'm filling this up that as I dip a plug in here, it's going to raise the volume so I don't want to fill it all the way to the top. But this is a pretty good texture. I like to just dip the plug and hold it. Another thing that I found is that I've done experiments with how much time the plug sits in the sealer and I did not notice hardly any difference between a few seconds till all the bubbles stop and literally for an hour. So I don't want to waste my time. I'm basically just going to let this sit in the sealer until I stop seeing the bubbles come through where the through hole is. Again, the most important to, uh, area for me is to make sure that that through hole and the hook holes are completely saturated. So what I'll do now is I'll take a little chip brush because I can let this drip and dry, but what's going to happen is you're going to get, you know, a much thicker coating on the bottom. So I'll literally take a chip brush and brush it off the sides. To be honest, if it were up to me, I wouldn't even seal the outside of the plug. If I could just get the inside where the uh, through hole and the hook holes were, I would be fine with that because your paint and your clear coat is going to seal the exterior side of the plug. I want this to dry as quickly as possible. So by having this thinned out and not having it drip for too long, that's going to uh, put me in business faster. And now I'll just hang this right here for now for demonstration purposes. When I'm doing this, I have uh, I do this over by my um, my dust collector, and I have it circulating the air, and I have a big rack that does all the plugs. But for now, I'll just let that drip into a pan, and I'm going to let that dry for at least 24 hours before I go to the next step.